I come from a small agrarian community in Germany, in Bavaria, in a very small town called Unsleben. In the community, there were um, all farmers, and my father and his brothers owned a granary. And the farmers had to come to them to get the feed for their animals. This is a, a picture of the granary, and it says Gebrüder Gärtner. This is my father, my grandmother, my Uncle Ludwig, who is deceased, Uncle Otto, who lives in South Africa, uh, Tante Fanny, deceased, and Tante Hilde, who was Ludwig's wife. I was just six years old and I was starting school and the school I went to was one room. I started in first grade and that's as far as I got there but my cousins moved up till they went all the way to eighth grade. My cousins on a Friday afternoon they were taken to one of the churches and the nuns taught them the girls to sew and the boys to do woodwork. And uh, they really enjoyed it and they mingled with the Christians. There was no problem whatsoever. Suddenly, the handwriting was on the wall. My, my father had bought me a new scooter and we thought we had wonderful neighbors that we did everything together. And suddenly, the scooter was no longer there. We saw that my neighbor's, our neighbor's son was riding the scooter. And when my father went up to him, the man called him a dirty Jew. And at that point, we really realized how bad things were for the Jews. There had been so many laws since 1933 when Hitler came into power. The lawyers could no longer practice except with Jews. Teachers could no longer teach. And things became really, really bad. The night of broken glass, my grandmother and I were sleeping in the same room, and my grandmother was under the window, and uh, they broke the windows, and uh, her legs uh, got cut. Uh, they dragged my father uh, and all the Jewish men to Dachau. Dachau was the nearest concentration camp, and one uncle hanged himself in the loft of the barn. Uh, he just couldn't uh, cope with it. We had no idea if we would ever see my father again. And Dachau was filled with Jewish men in, in all the neighborhoods, all the towns. These are three mugshots of my father. And uh, you can't see too well, but there are lots of marks on his face. Uh, they took everything out of the synagogues and burned them in the middle of, of the, the street. It, it was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. In our community, there may have been 30 Jewish families at one point, and little by little, they disappeared. My father had put in for a visa to leave the country. And that was the only way you could leave the country unless you found a way through the mountains. And we lived near the Bavarian Alps. So some people before us escaped through the Bavarian Alps. But uh, my Uncle Max uh, tried to help us as much as possible. And we got a visa to leave the country. Only the, the clothes that we wore uh, were what we were able to take and uh, we found our way to Hamburg. And uh, in, ha in Hamburg, there was a ship called the Orinoco. And the Orinoco uh, had room for the people at the bottom of the ship. And later, um, during the war, the Orinoco was a troop ship, and it was torpedoed and sunk with Nazis on it. We took the Orinoco and we got into Cuba. 
We left at the end of 1938, and the Jewish services in Cuba were most helpful. They, they were wonderful. Cuba at that time had the very rich and the very poor, and uh, there were about 10 of us. There were three families that wound up in Cuba, and uh, none of my cousins did. They left a little bit earlier than we did. Nobody could work. Uh, you couldn't earn any money. And so uh, the Jewish services in Cuba were wonderful. They really did so much to keep us alive. They uh, let us go to school there and learn English, and it was British English. I don't know how it happened, but my parents became domestics for a very wealthy family. They could earn no money whatsoever, but they were allowed to get food. Finally, our quota number came up. We had only our clothes, and not too many of them were in good condition, and we took a ship to, uh, a little ship, to Florida. And from Florida, we took a bus up to New York. And we lived for my, with my uncle and aunt for a very short time. And finally, we found an apartment. And my father was a dishwasher at the World's Fair at just before it ended. And my mother cleaned houses. And that's how we existed and subsisted. The youngsters were not very kind to me. I remember being beaten up several times on the way to and from school, and I hated to go to school because I knew what was going to happen. Little by little, uh, the children began to accept me, and they became my friends. We lived in, the apart in that apartment um, till I went to college. My, uh, it was a one-bedroom apartment, and uh, my bedroom was the living room couch, and for all those years, I slept on the living room couch. You know, it's a matter of survival. There is no question about it. You, you realize how lucky you are that you are a survivor, and you make do. There were 20 some odd of us who went back to Unsleben. And when we arrived, what had been Gebrüder Gärtner was now the town hall. And they had an umpapa band, and they had food out, they had teenagers there. It was just amazing. This is a picture of me at the Jewish cemetery, and I must say, the people in Unsleben did an excellent job of keeping up the cemetery. And it shows the last person who was buried there who was my grandfather in 1938. And a man came up to me and he apologized to me. And I said, what for? And he said, when we were children, I gave you a, a candy wrapped, supposedly, it was a stone that was wrapped in, in candy wrapper. Yosef was born, I discovered, one day before me. We are the same age except for one day. We still correspond and we email each other. We became good friends. There is evil, <laughs> great evil. We are seeing it here now in the United States. And it, I'm, I'm just aghast that, first of all, anti-Semitism is rising. There's been all kinds of evil, but I think it's important for youngsters to learn about the evil that can happen and, and to work against it. And I'm just delighted that it's part of the Tennessee curriculum now. It needs to be. Never forget. And the older we get, uh, the more we drop out and uh, it's something that must be told. Mm -hmm.